What's up guys, Justin here from TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So I wanted to walk you through kind of the different looks between using displacement maps and using normal maps in V-Ray. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So to start off, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying a texture from Polygon.com. Polygon.com is a website where you can download textures that come with the various maps and other things that you need to make objects look more realistic. It's got a great free download set section where you can download some textures and uh, try it out. In this case what we're going to do, and I'll link to a video that I did on my SketchUp channel about this, but um, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and in the free textures, so you're just going to log in, you're going to create a login, you're going to go into textures and you're going to go to free, and we're going to use, if you scroll down, there's an object for ground tire tracks. This is a great example for displacement maps because you can see how it's really rough and so you're going to want to come in here and you're going to want to download that texture you're also going to want to make sure that you download the displacement maps and also the normal maps and so in addition to really just download all of them and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring that into SketchUp and so I talked a little bit about how to do this in my other video but we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a material in V-Ray we're going to come in and we're going to add a generic material. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and name this generic material Polygon Muddy Road. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply it to this object. And one thing to note that's going to be really important is you don't want to apply this directly to the face because the, um, the displacement maps don't work right. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to apply it to this group. So I've grouped my geometry and I'm going to apply this to the outside of this group. And we can go ahead and right click on this and click apply to selection to apply this to this face. Um, notice that there isn't really anything in here quite yet because we haven't added the images. Um, I also do have a dome light in here that I've applied an HDRI to just to make this look a little bit more realistic. I'll link to a video about doing that in the notes down below. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our material to this and then we're going to try adding a normal map and then we're going to add a displacement map and we're going to look at the difference. So the first thing we're going to do with a texture like this is we're going to come in and we're going to add the material to the diffuse map. So you're just going to click on the little box over here, you're going to click on bitmap and you're going to go find this. And so make sure that you extract the folder that this is located in. In this case, this is what's located in that ground tire tracks download. So the first thing we want to do is we want to apply this uh, COL, the color map, to this face. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring in your muddy road texture. One thing you're going to notice is you're going to get a lot of tiling in here um, because these aren't necessarily set up uh, to fit in SketchUp sizing. So just in here kind of odd. So all you're going to do is you're just going to go into your materials section of your tray. You're going to find the muddy road. You're going to go to edit and we'll just change the 10 inches to 10 feet. And so that usually does a pretty good job of sizing this in. You can kind of play around with it if you want this to have a different size. But you can see how now if I look at this, you can actually see the individual tire tracks and stuff like that. So now this has been applied, our V-Ray material looks like a muddy road. So if we were to come in here and do an interactive render, You can see how this road's going to render out and it kind of looks like a road. So the image is high resolution, so this looks good. But the problem is as you rotate down, what you're going to notice is it's super flat. So it really just kind of looks like a texture that we've applied to a flat surface. And so there's two things we're going to do to this in order to make it look more realistic. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a normal map. And so basically a normal map is a map that you use to basically fake the bumps and dents of a face. So basically you bring this map in, it affects the way that the uh, light's gonna bounce off of this, and uh, that affects how realistic this looks. So you're just gonna go down to the map section, you're gonna turn on bump or normal mapping, and then you're gonna click this little arrow so that we can apply our bump map or our normal map to this. And so that's the first thing you're going to want to notice is you're going to want to make sure to click this drop down and set this to a normal map rather than a bump map. That's going to make a big difference. Um, and a normal map is just more realistic than a bump map is. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring that in. So to do that, we're going to click on this little box. You're going to go up to bitmap. 
and we're gonna find this NRM 3K or whatever resolution you brought this in. So I'm just gonna double click on this, bring this in. And the other thing we're gonna do once we've brought this in is we're just gonna click the drop down and we're just gonna pick the rendering space linear option. And you'll notice when you did that, this all of a sudden looks a lot more realistic than when it was the screen space RGB. You notice how the shading changes and everything else. And so now we'll go ahead and leave that on rendering space linear. Now let's go in and look at what this did. So I'm gonna kind of rotate down and zoom in, and it gets a little hard to see this when this display, or the diffuse map with the texture is applied to this. So we're gonna go up here and turn this off so we can kind of analyze this. So what you're gonna notice is you can see how now this face, even though it doesn't have a uh, texture image applied to it, is still bumpy, the light is still bouncing off of it. So you can see how this creates a more realistic image um, by kind of faking those little bumps in here. But when you come in here and you rotate down, down, you can tell it's still a flat face like this isn't 3d in any way and so when you start rotating down and getting this from angles that aren't like straight up and down it's great that you're picking up the uh, bump mapping or sorry the uh, normal mapping lighting off of here but you're not necessarily getting that super realistic look and so what we want to apply now is a displacement map and so while a bump map kind of fakes the bumps in here, a displacement map actually tells V-Ray to figure moving the geometry around. So what this is gonna do is instead of this being flat, it's actually gonna move the geometry up and down inside your rendering to create a much more realistic image. And so to do this, we're just gonna go down to the option for displacement, and we're gonna turn this on. And so you'll notice nothing really changed at this point because we haven't applied that map yet. Well, what we wanna do is we wanna click on this little box and we wanna go up to bitmap, and we wanna go find the displacement map. And in this case, we're gonna take this 16 bitmap. You can see how this is a much bigger image than this other displacement map, and we're just gonna bring that in. And so we're gonna bring that in, and you'll notice there hasn't been a huge change quite yet. So there's two things that might be affecting that. The first is sometimes when you first bring in a displacement map, this doesn't pick that up. So one of the things you may want to do when you first bring that in is you may want to stop your interactive render and then start it again because sometimes that just doesn't get incorporated in your image. And so that's one thing to be aware of when you do this. The other thing to be aware of is right now our displacement amount isn't set very high. So if we kind of zoom down like this you can see how we're getting a little bit of up and down in here but not a whole bunch you can see how it's just barely moving this geometry around so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here we're gonna adjust this amount up to something like five and so what you're gonna notice is first of all your preview updates and you can see how this is moving a lot more but you can see how everything got a lot more pronounced in here because when you set the amount higher that means that everything's moving around a lot more so if I kind of rotate around over here um, you can kind of see on this edge here how much up and down is happening so if we were to adjust that to something like 10 as opposed to 5 then I mean first of all you you may get a little bit of an over-the-top look at this but this is also a great indicator of what this is actually doing this is actually moving the geometry up and down the other thing you may notice about this though is when you do this your computer is going to slow down and actually while i was filming this um, because this wasn't doing a GPU, it was set to a CPU render um, because it was using so many resources, all my USB stuff actually kind of crashed in the background. So you just need to be aware that when you're working with displacement maps like this as opposed to the bump maps, it's just much more processor intensive. And so um, just to give you kind of an idea, I'm going to go and I'm going to switch the displacement mapping off. And look what this does when I do that. When I turn the displacement mapping off, this goes back to a flat face in here. So while you are getting kind of the lighting getting faked by the normal maps, you're not getting that same result that you get with the displacement maps. And so when we turn this back on, we'll go ahead and turn this back on. We'll kind of rotate this down. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at this uh, more over the top value right now, just so you can keep an idea what that looks like. We're gonna go back in and turn the diffuse map on so that this is getting that uh, material or that texture applied to it. And we're gonna let this work. And you can see what this ends up with is this ends up with a really realistic rough material, even though this is only a flat, material applied to a face within SketchUp. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Are you using displacement maps 
I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new content every week. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.